20 horse on a speedboat? Probably not. When installing your new 20 horsepower Tahatsu, you're gonna need a few things. This is the MFS 20 EPTL, so electric start, power tilt, long shaft. This is a remote motor, so this is gonna drive from a steering wheel and a shift throttle box that's remote from the motor versus a tiller style. What we need first is a control box. So this is a Tahatsu control box. This is going to install on the railing of the pontoon boat. We'll get to that. And then we also need some shift throttle cables. These are 3300 style. And the fittings for these are gonna be included in the control box and with the motor for the motor side and the control box side. They're universal, meaning they're threaded on the end. You can thread on any fitting. Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, Tahatsu, they all take the same 3300 style cable, but they all have their own unique fitting on the end. Let's get to unboxing the motor. I'll show you what all is packed in the motor box. As you get unpacking your motor, this happens to be a white model color wise. Uh, a lot of styrofoam, take care of that responsibly. What we have, we have a little black tool kit. I usually just keep that somewhere in the boat in a glove box or a storage compartment just in case you need some tools uh, down the road if you're stuck out on the water. We've got a steering arm or a steering bar. That's important. We're going to set that right next to where we're installing the motor. You've got your owner's manual with an extra spark plug, safety lanyard clip, and a rope if you have to replace your pull rope. Big thing here, what I need out of this besides my owner's manual, there's a little bag, it's a green bag. This has the motor side fittings for your control cables. So these plastic fittings, there's a plastic washer and a pin, you need all of that. So once again, I'm gonna set this right next to where I'm installing it on this pontoon. And I can put this owner's manual and stuff with my tool kit, because my customer is gonna need that. You're also gonna have your motor mounting bolts. These are metric. So don't be fooled, it is a Japanese made motor. It's metric sizes, they're roughly 5 16 Set those next to where we're mounting the motor. And a simple instruction sheet telling you to remove any of the plastic or styrofoam pieces that are under the hood, protecting everything for during transport. When I unbox this, just to make everything easier, I like to go ahead and just cut the box to where I can lay it all flat and then I only grab a second set of hands and we're just gonna stand it up out of the box and then slide it right onto the transom. We got Marty to help us here. What I like to do is go ahead and get rid of this styrofoam that's on the lower unit, and that skeg can just rest on the cardboard. And I'm just gonna keep the bottom, my foot stopping it. Marty's just gonna lift the power head up. I'm gonna help him as soon as I can get a hand on it. We're on the cardboard so we're not scratching anything up, and we can remove this covering and we're just going to walk it right over there are these big ears we call these ears they you could option to bolt that clamp in i like to through bolt every motor i can because a it's a theft deterrent especially on something that's 20 horsepower light enough to carry uh, but also security in terms of if you hit something these if they're not perfectly tight you might lose your motor off the back of the boat. Let's not risk that. We're gonna run four bolts into the bracket. There's a handle up here, so we can grab a hold of that. There's a little handle on the back of the motor. We're gonna turn and just set it right on the transom. So as you can see, when we set this on here, we're working on the floor. So if you're working on your trailer, you're gonna have enough height. The motor's gonna rest right on there. I'm gonna need to go ahead and hook my battery cables up and hit this power tilt button and this will tilt the bracket forward and that'll put it into position where I can get bolts in. We're gonna do that first. I'm gonna go ahead and get this situated to where I can bolt it in. Then we'll move on to installing the components. Couple tags on there, we're just gonna remove. When I hook the battery up, I can tilt 
And you see how that just moves right into position to follow the contour of the angle of the transom. That's in a good position there. So now what I can do just to get it tight is I can grab a couple clamps. I'm gonna measure from the outside of this bracket to the corner of my transom and make sure I'm even on each side so that my boat's not going in circles when I'm trying to drive in a straight line. We don't want it offset one way or the other. We did replace this transom board on here. I always recommend that if you're replacing the motor, you might as well take the extra half hour to put new, we use marine grade treated plywood in there. And this has a nice aluminum cover. That's just gonna help add a little bit of beef and protect that wood from chipping or anything. So first things first, I'm gonna grab a tape measure and a clamp so I can clamp this thing in position. Then I'll drill those 5 16 holes and we'll run these bolts through. A seriously noteworthy thing for your steering cable. Some pontoon boats, and fishing boats for that matter, the steering cable might come out from here. It might actually come out sideways through a hole. And the only way, you may have figured this out when you were taking the motor, your old motor off, the only way to get that, that steering cable out sometimes from the motor, the steering tube, is actually to remove the motor, let it be hanging or off the boat, then you can get the angle but sometimes there's just not enough room or not the right angle to remove your steering cable or reinstall so sometimes take that take note of that you might have to install your steering cable into the motor before you actually bolt it in position on the transom in this case my steering cable comes out of the back deck here not a big deal Got lucky and that was within a sixteenth of an inch to start with, centered wise, so that doesn't usually happen. So I'm gonna clamp this so I can hold it in place and then I can drill, start drilling holes. This is a 20 horsepower motor. I am gonna just let it rest right on top of the transom. I'm not gonna worry about where the ventilation or cavitation plate is. That's this guy down here. I'm not gonna worry about where that is in relation to the pontoons on this boat. If you're installing a bigger horsepower, you wanna go faster, that can play in tremendously. In this case, this little motor is not gonna make a difference, not gonna push this boat fast enough to cause ventilation or cavitation anyway. So we're just gonna let it rest down. When I clamp it, we'll drill it and bolt it. You could, if you're a real shallow operation, anything like that, special occasion, you can leave a gap between here and bolt through, you definitely got a bolt if you're leaving a gap, but you could raise the motor up. There's three holes for options of motor height. Again, we're gonna set it right on there, let it rest, and we'll drill our holes. Take one last measurement, make sure we kept everything where we want it. And of course, it moved on me a little bit. We're clamped up, ready to go. So now I can go ahead and drill my holes. I'm gonna drill, ideally, that top hole in case someone ever wants to move this up. That way they have two holes to go up. We know we can't go down anymore, so we're good there. For that hardware, you've got your bolt. You're gonna run a washer on the bolt. You can run this through, it doesn't matter. You can go either way. You can run this through so the bolt's on the inside. Typically, aesthetically, we're gonna run it so the nut is on the outside so that if you're looking down from the boat, you don't see the end, you just see the nice clean bolt head. On this boat, because we're going into a wood transom, I'm gonna grab a big fender washer to take some of that pressure. Otherwise, this is just gonna squish right into that wood, not gonna last as long over time. The other option would be to take a strip of aluminum, usually like eighth inch to quarter inch, and drill that where your bolts are going through just to add structure, a strip across the whole top and or the bottom. Usually you'd wanna go at least across the top if you're doing that. And that way, it's just gonna keep everything from sinking into the wood. It's gonna make everything last longer and be sturdier. I happen to have these nice big, probably inch and a half fender washers laying around. So I'm gonna run that right through. I left the original washer right on there, which is gonna work just fine. And that way I can do that on all four bolts and we won't sink into the wood. You're gonna need a 13 millimeter socket and wrench. And I like to have an impact just so I can get those bolts started through the wood a little faster, a little easier. I would normally run my bolt through so all I see from the inside of the boat is the head. However, this little ear here really gets in the way. So at least on these top two, 
I'm gonna run the bolt through the other side. That'll be a lot easier to install the nut and washer here. So tried it, didn't like it. We're gonna run it the opposite way through. So on the motor side, or on the outside, we're gonna have a washer that's going on through. And then we'll do our big fender washer, the small washer, and the nylock nut that came with in that hardware bag. And I'm gonna impact it snug. And then I like to hand tighten every motor I install for that last little bit to make sure it's snug and gonna hold. I've got that first bolt in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and drill the rest of my holes and get the rest of the bolts. Now that I know we're in place where we wanna be. Johnny G's here, fresh off of a couple second and third place finishes in some bass tournaments. So we got the motor bolted now. I'm gonna go ahead and install that steering cable and bracket so things can't turn and that'll make it easier on me to install our shift throttle cables. I'm gonna go ahead and grease up the end of my steering cable here, the part that's gonna push and pull through the motor tube and work it around that way. If moisture ever gets in there, it's not gonna hurt anything. It's gonna keep that steering nice and smooth. You'll see a lot of white lithium grease used there too, but this is just a Johnson Avenue triple guard grease. I use it for almost everything. So this nut, I slide this stainless steel bar into the steering tube. This nut is just gonna thread right on. And I just use a big adjustable wrench to tighten it. You don't wanna over tighten it, it is aluminum, you could strip it, but it's super important that that gets tightened because that's what's holding the cable into the motor in order to push and pull and steer it. I get it nice and snug. Nice thing on this motor is that the steering tube nut is held in place by the cast of the bracket. So a lot of times these will spin on you. It can't in this case, which is really nice. We are on to that steering tie bar. We're gonna open that up. And you have a little black plastic, uh, I don't know if you wanna call it a grommet, a seal, but it's got some rubber seal to it. This is gonna thread on the opposite side as your steering cable, and it just slides right over top of that steering cable, and I'm just gonna hand tighten it onto those threads. If you over tighten it, you'll probably crack that plastic, and then you're not gonna seal everything off as well. When we look at our steering bar, our down drop end is gonna be what grabs that steering cable itself. So that'll slide through the end of the steering cable. We'll show you that in just a second here. But first, I need to install this on the motor. So what we're gonna do, we have a few pieces here. Let's look at the hardware. If I take this bolt out, it's our stainless bolt with a washer on the bottom. And then we also have a nut with a washer and then this little spacer washer that's gonna help keep everything smooth. I like to put a little bit of grease on this guy. That's just gonna help keep things moving fluidly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our bolt up through the bottom. There is a second hole here. It's normally I would go into the closer hole. However, in this case, that hole's off center. So I don't wanna mess with that. I'm gonna keep it on this outside. And we're just gonna slide that steering bar down, washer and a nut. This is typically gonna be a 14 millimeter or it's a tight fit. 916 will work as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and snug that up. And even with that snug, we still get a nice little bit of play in our steering arm, which is gonna allow for smoother steering. We don't wanna lock everything down so tight we can't turn it. I'm gonna go to the steering wheel now and get this cable to push out just a little bit so I don't have to turn the motor all the way to run my tie bar into the steering cable. I'm gonna take that nut and washer off. Sometimes you'll have two washers and this one they just supply with one. I'm gonna drop that steering bar right down into that hole. And then we can add a little bit of grease to this too. And washer, then nylock nut. And our 916 wrench. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten this down so I like to go all the way snug and then I back it off about an eighth or a quarter of a turn just to get a little bit of play back in there. Now when I sear, I'm 
we're ready to rock and roll. So our next piece of the puzzle is getting our shift and throttle cables to run in through the front here. Before we mess with anything on the engine side, we're gonna move on to the control box and get our shift throttle cables started there. And then we can make our final adjustments on the motor side. So we're gonna switch gears and get inside the boat to get our control box, ignition harness, and shift throttle cables installed and run back. I've opened my control box, box, the box for my control box. We've got a bag that's got your installation manual, some stickers, and a hardware bag. The hardware bag is your really important piece here. We're gonna go ahead and open that up and just lay everything out on the owner's manual. Camera died the other day when we were starting to unpack our control box. So pick up right where we left off. I've got all my components from that box. So that hardware bag had my three bolts and the washers and nuts for actually installing the control box. In this case, we're gonna be installing it to the railing over here behind the steering wheel. It'll be comfortable to drive there out of the way and safe. And then the other hardware, there are some spacers that would be for your control box. If you need to get it, say I was mounting it to the console here, I could give it some space off the console. I may use this on the railings. Usually I don't because it makes it a little bit flimsier. And when you're going to aluminum paneling, it's already a little bit wonky or it can move to begin with. So if you need space uh, to get at the key switch or anything like that, depending on your situation, you might use spacers. And then the other big ones, you've got your clips for your control box. You've got your cable ends. So these are gonna thread on, and we'll show you that in a minute here, onto our shift throttle cables. And then you've got your clips, a little C-clip there, there's probably a technical term for that, that's gonna hold the cable onto the post on the control box. And then you have a little spacer, this little guy, it's gonna slide in between the shift throttle cables in the control box housing. I'll show you how that works too. That's everything that was in that hardware bag. I'm gonna slide that aside and I'm gonna to move to the actual control box here. Let's take a look at this. What we have is the shift throttle and control box itself. Comes with the key, key switch is in the back, safety lanyard, and then our shift throttle. So trim and tilt is right on the handle if you have a power tilt model. Remember, this is a power tilt, this 20 horsepower. So when I'm going more than really idle speed or just above, if I hit the up button, it's not gonna have the, the power, the torque as a tilt to move. If there's torque from the prop, the tilt cylinder, the tilt motor is not gonna be able to overpower that. That's trim. If your motor has trim, it's like a lower gear for tilting the motor up. So not to be confused there, there's a difference between trim, that low gear and under load, being able to move the motor up. And then there's tilt, which is just a higher speed, higher gear, less torque. So when I'm idling into the dock or coming into shallow water, or I need to work on the motor, anything like that, I hit the up button, it's gonna tilt it up and it's quite fast. But again, remember, you can't tilt it up when you're trying to run full speed. Not that a 20 horse, would have the power to lift the bow anyway. So sticking out of the back of the control box, we've got what is a gauge plug-in or a gauge harness plug-in, which if you're running gauges, it actually comes with a gauge harness, pretty nifty. So that would just plug in. In this case, we're not running gauges. It's a little 16 and a half foot pontoon boat. We don't need all the gauges, but these are actually labeled for battery. Uh, so you have your battery positive, your ground, you've got your tachometer you've got all the wires you need if you wanted to go into a gauge this would plug and play you'd have to if you had a tech or a tahatsu gauge this might just plug right in not familiar with that i haven't done one in a long time but you could also splice into these and run them to a faria gauge or another generic gauge just have to adjust the pull setting make sure it's compatible with a new tahatsu 20 horse we're gonna set this aside because we don't really need it right now and then this big bundle of wire is our ignition harness. So we're not gonna use all of this to give you a little extra. It's, uh, I don't know the length on this one if it's on the box here. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't tell me, but this control box, I'll put it up here and you can pause it if you need to so that you can write down that part number. This is a Tahatsu part. 
So that's the pre-rigging kit, it's the side mount control box, but it comes with the ignition harness already installed into the control box. Makes life a lot easier. And this has on the end our plug-in for the main ignition plug-in for the motor. So this is what's gonna power from the motor to the control box, communicate everything. And then there's another plug in there, but this we'll get to when we get to the motor side. For now, I'm gonna push this through. I have a little grommet in the floor. That's typically how I run this on the pontoon boat. If I were going into the console here, I would likely cut a hole either right in the floor at the base of the console, or I'd cut a hole in the console a little bit lower to run everything down and hide it. But in this case, I've just got a hole in the floor here with a nice rubber grommet, a rigging boot, if you will. You could do that too. But I'm gonna run this down through and that'll eventually get pulled to the back of the boat, which this doesn't have a whole lot. I've got 12 foot shift throttle cables. I used a uh, 12 foot steering cable. So that tells you to go back. It's only going back about four feet and then it's gonna go over about four feet and we'll, we'll have some extra. We can loop that up and tie it up underneath on top of the pontoon or under the deck. So I'm gonna run this down and then get rid of some of the excess and then we can talk about the shift throttle cables. So with my harness run down through the floor there, I can fine tune how much slack is left, but this is gonna mount basically up on the rail just like this. There was another control box at one point. We'll try to use any of the old holes that we can, uh, but that's not always possible. So we're trying to make it as clean as we can if we can't use the exact holes. For this, I need to open up the back of my control box, which is just gonna be two Phillips head screws. So if the box right here, you can see this is a bottom compartment. We're not gonna touch this top part. I'm going to be just keeping it how it's set up from the factory. And I'm gonna pull these two Phillips head, number two Phillips machine screws out, and that'll open up the guts of the control box where I can run my shift throttle cables in. I'm gonna get rid of the key and the safety lanyard for now. That's just gonna get in my way. So we'll get it out of there. And then let's talk about our shift throttle cables real quick. So these are identical. When you buy a shift throttle cable from, whether it's online or a local marina, this is a 3300 style cable. Both ends look identical. This cable end is just threaded and there's a nut on here that moves up and down. That's important because that's gonna help lock your fitting onto the end. So what I like to do when I open the first box is I like to label an S or a T. So one of these cables is gonna be a shift and one's gonna be a throttle, but they look identical. So rather than having to cause myself an extra step once I get it installed, I'm just gonna label both ends of this cable with an S. Both ends look the same too. This could be a shift or a throttle cable. I just get to pick. I'm just gonna put an S on each end of the same cable. That way I know that this is my shift cable. I could mark the other one with a T as well, but as long as I know which is shift, that's gonna take care of any problem that I might have. The way these cables work is we are gonna have a fitting on the end here that's gonna to attach to the control box. This groove right here goes all the way around the cable. That's gonna slide into the control box in a way that it catches so that the sheathing portion stays put and then the cable itself can move in and out. So if you see, I have the other end of this same cable here. When I move this end, push or pull, it pushes and pulls the opposite end. That's how these cables work. Same thing is gonna happen on the motor side. There's a groove in the motor that's gonna hold this same cutout or groove indentation in the sheathing of the cable to hold everything in place. I'm gonna go ahead and just slide so I have less stuff in the boat. Get rid of the box. And I'm gonna slide one end of my shift cable down underneath the boat going through the same hole as my ignition harness. And then I'll go ahead and get my throttle cable out and do the same thing. Again, it does not matter which cable end you put forward or back at the engine or the control box. It is labeled on one side and then I'll have the C-Star Solutions. It has the part number and those last two digits of the part number, CCX 63, 312 means that's 12 foot. A lot of times you're gonna see this on the motor side, but it doesn't really matter. It's gonna keep it nice and clean on the inside of the boat, not having anything labeled, because that's where you're gonna be sitting and looking most of the time. 
if you're wrapping it in any sort of conduit, you don't need to worry about that at all. I've got my shift throttle cables run down through the floor. I am ready now to go ahead and put my cable ends on. What I like to do with my cable ends is I like to just go ahead, they're the exact same, so they can go on either or, it doesn't matter. I like to take the nut on the end of that threaded portion of the cable. I like to put the nut right at halfway. Then I'm gonna thread on my cable end. The reason I put it on halfway is because I'm gonna make the final adjustments at the motor. And that's how you adjust your shift and your throttle positioning and fine adjustments is by this threaded rod. So if I put this on about halfway, then I'm going to be, when I get to the motor side, I'm going to be, have some play either direction for getting my throttle in the right position and my shift in the right position. So I'm going to do the same on both of them. And worst case scenario, when I get it hooked up on the motor, which I'll do that before I install the control box on the actual railing, I could open the bottom of the control box back up and look to make sure uh, where if I need to adjust the cable end any to get more play at the motor side. But I'm gonna go ahead and just thread it on all the way to that stainless nut that's on the end of the cable. And I just hold the nut in place and make sure that I tighten that down hand tight. You could use a wrench, but hand tight is gonna keep that from coming undone at all over time anyhow. We've got our cable ends on. I'm ready to open up this control box with that Phillips head number two screwdriver. And then we'll show you what the guts look like and where the cables go. I've changed angles on you because I think it's easier to see from this side, but I like, I'm sitting on the seat of the boat right now. You might be sitting in the captain's chair in your boat. I feel like it's a lot easier to work with, with the control box in my lap. So remember, I haven't hooked anything up on the motor side yet. Those cables can move when I push this, they can move freely at the other end. And my control box is going to stay in neutral, locked in there the whole time. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo the bottom two Phillips head screws, helps if I use the right screwdriver. I have this flat head here, and that's just gonna help push my C-clips onto the posts in the control box. Don't lose those machine screws. I like to just take that plate right off. It works as a nice tray. Put my screws right in it and set it to the side. When you're looking at the control box in this position, You've got your ignition harness that comes in here. It's got a little grommet that's gonna line up with that plate we just took off. And then if we look inside here, if I advance throttle only, you're gonna see that this first arm to move is my throttle arm. If I were to shift, that first arm that moves when I shift, this guy is my shift. So that's the quick, easy way to decide which is which. Now, when I go ahead and run my cables in, so this groove here at the bottom is where my shift throttle cables are gonna run in. And there's a little catch right here, and that's what's gonna line up. You can see it better in this position. These little brackets, or I don't know what you wanna call those, but lips, they're gonna catch that cable sheathing where it's machined out, and that's what holds the sheathing in place so that these mechanisms here can push and pull the actual internal of the cable that's gonna move on the motor side. So what I need to do, because the shift is on the bottom, that's gonna be the cable that needs to go in first. I need to find my shift cable, it's got the S on it, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set that in. That sheathing has to go in there, and once it's in, I can't move it. So that's where that lines up. And then I'm gonna just use the, the cable end, push and pull it, to line it up on top of that post. If you need to twist the cable a little bit, that's okay, it's not gonna hurt anything, but that's just gonna go right on the post and that exposes a little groove that's machined into the end of the post. That's where that C-clip is gonna go. My fingers aren't nimble enough or maybe not strong enough to push that on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it started and then carefully use the end of my flathead screwdriver to push the clip into position I like to keep a thumb on top of the clip and then push with the screwdriver. That way it can't go flying off. When it clicks on there, it's all the way on. That means I'm held in place. My cable can't come off. My shift cable is officially in. So when I shift, 
it moves appropriately, pulling into forward, pushing to go into reverse. I've got that cable end on and I've got the sheathing in place. Now it's time to take that little rubber piece, a little grommet guy, a little fitting that's gonna fit. It has grooves in it, just like the cable. That's gonna slide down so that's resting right on top of that shift cable. Now, when I set my throttle cable on top, it keeps the appropriate spacing to allow them to have the right tolerances and clearances to work correctly. I've got my throttle cable now. I'm gonna put that into the same groove. I'm gonna to have to hold it in place, especially with that little fitting in there in order to keep it from popping out. But I'm gonna go ahead, slide the cable end onto the throttle post and then put my clip on just like I did the, sh the shift cable. Clip is on, that cable sheathing is in the groove. That is good to go. So now, I'm gonna get my back plate, the cover plate. And when I put this on, I need to make sure that I line up the ignition harness, that little grommet in here. And then I need to make sure, if you look at your plate, those same grooves and barrel fitting are in there to help close in and hold that shift throttle cable in position. So I need to make sure that that goes on the correct spot on the throttle cable as well. I always start with the back screw going in first because that's holding all those guts in place. My control box side is done. I've got everything locked back in with those two machine screws. So now when I shift, super smooth, nothing hooked up and it should be smooth once you finish the motor side too. Reverse works as well. I like to go through and make sure that that's all working. Throttle only works. I'm ready to jump to the motor side before I install this on the railing. So let's go back and take care of that. Hooking up our shift throttle cables to the motor side, then we'll come back up and finish this on the boat side. So back on the motor side here, what I've got, I turned my motor all the way, trying to make it easy for you to see. I have my throttle arm here that's gonna pull to advance throttle and my shift, but it's all down underneath here. So in order to get at my mechanism for throttle and shift, I need to remove this side cowl. There's a series of bolts that are gonna have to come out. In order to remove that, I'm gonna lift the rubber grommet, the, get, the hood seal is gonna lift right off so that I can get access to where this splits. You'll see on the cowl, there's a split here and that's where this is gonna come apart and that gets me access to the mechanism that's gonna hold the shift throttle cable in, just like on the control box side, pins that cable in place. And then it's also gonna give me access to where I can actually rig in underneath here where the cables connect to the motor. These are 10 millimeter bolts. If I can help it, I like to just back them out just enough where everything's coming apart without pulling them completely out of the cowl. So we have the four right here, and then there are two more on the port side of the motor too. And one on the port side comes right out, the other you will need an extension to get at. Now that's gonna allow me to split the cowls to get at what I need to on the other side. I misspoke, there's actually seven. There's a seventh cowl bolt down below. Now when I split this, it's gonna come off completely. I can just go ahead, set this off to the side. You can see how I kept all of the bolts in it just sticking out. Here's the, the guts of what we're working with. What we have is a mechanism here that's going to hold our shift and our throttle cables in place. We have a grommet here, a rigging grommet that we need to pay attention to because our shift and throttle cables have to go in a particular way. And then we also have to feed our ignition harness in here as well. So looking at everything from my point of view, we've got our clips that are gonna hold that cable sheathing, just like the control box, that groove does the same thing on the motor side. This is gonna click into place and lock the cable in. There's another one here for the shift cable. This one would be for the throttle cable. And then we've got this rigging grommet that we've gotta pay attention to. It fits into this groove and the cowl kind of holds it all together. So we'll 
piece that back together when we get there but this split on top is going to allow for your ignition harness to come in and plug in right here to the motor side of the ignition harness and then we've got that other triangle plug that's going to plug in as well and then our shift throttle cables are going to go into this hole this will be our throttle cable and then our shift cable will be on the inside so our posts for our shift and throttle cable we have our shift post here and this is that entire shift mechanism and then our throttle post is here so pull advances the throttle on the motor so again our shift cable will go into the inside groove the farthest port the throttle cable will be farthest starboard going through the holes in the rigging grommet let's start by getting our ignition harness run in here and then we can position our grommet and get our shift and throttle cables through in the appropriate places too there's one more hole but it's sealed up right now as you can see these are wide open so that's an accessory or an additional maybe if there's some other sort of harness that you ran or alarm system i'm not sure that this motor could even have a tilt gauge wouldn't make much sense because it's usually called a trim gauge but if you ever need to run something else through there you would but in this case shift throttle ignition battery cables are already run through as well well you see what i've done here is you will see that my ignition harness is coming out of the deck in the back here this little tray for battery uh, and then the other accessory stuff there's a tray on the other side for the gas tank what i'm going to do is run my ignition harness out of that hole it's a pretty tight bend to come from the pontoon up through the hole and then over to the motor the electrical harness can make really tight radius bends it's not going to hurt anything i don't necessarily want to try to crimp it but it can bend like that no problem my shift throttle cables don't have that same pliability because there's that steel inside so i want to be conscious of how big of a, a bend i put in this and ideally 8 to 12 inches as much it would be as much of a radius as you want to put in it so i'm going to play it safe i ran those through the transom coming right through here and there might be a little loop in front of the motor kind of like that that is totally fine because when the motor turns either direction you're not going to have any pinching or anything that's going to wear the cables out faster or create harder shift and throttle uh, adjustments so we're going to leave our shift throttle cables hanging here for a second like i said we're going to start with that ignition harness here what i like to do is i'm going to go ahead and plug in that trim tilt connection and then i'm going to go ahead and plug in my main harness ignition harness to the motor side there's a little groove on top here a little square cutout that plugs in to the ignition harness on the motor i line up my grooves and plug it in and you will hear and feel it click into place we're going to keep that run just like where it was tuck this excess wire down underneath so it's out of the way of anything that's moving and then i can run this out and into the hole in the grommet the grommet will eventually make its way back into the housing of the cowl but next thing i need to do is get my shift and throttle cables into the through the grommet into their position on this bracket here because i'm starting with that shift cable it's on the inside i could really put either cable in first but i think it's gonna be easier for me to get my shift cable in then work and work from the inside to the out rather than trying to start with the throttle cable i take my cable marked shift and i'm not going to worry so much about the grommet yet i'm going to get it into that groove so i pull i have to move my ignition harness out of the way a little bit to move this tab remember that was locked in place got a little detent there that locks it in i'm going to open that right up and that makes room for the cable to drop right down where my thumb is there so i drop the sheathing in there and i'm going to go ahead and close that clip right in place because what i need to do is put my cable end here on and adjust it so that it'll fit properly on our shift post which is kind of tucked underneath here this is my shift post here it's tucked underneath behind the throttle post just a little bit that little green bag has my motor side goodies in it 
and they're more substantial what's going on the engine side i'm gonna go ahead and thread this on and then on top will go a plastic washer and then there's a pin that's going to hold it in place on that post that i'm sliding it onto it's a very fine thread my post is right here and right now i'm well beyond the post so i need to keep threading this on there's a little bit of play in the shift arm right here on the motor so what i want to do is get my fitting on the end of the cable right in the middle of that play right there looks pretty darn good and as you can see i mean i threaded this on a lot at least 10 turns my nut is still backed off a little bit i'm going to go ahead and slide the nut up and i can hold that in place tighten them together and that slides right on top of that post now plastic washer and there's a hole in the post that the pin is gonna slide through. And just like these pins are on here, it's gonna slide right to that middle position where it's locked in. Now, my cable is attached to the shift mechanism of the motor. I'm not gonna test that yet. I really don't wanna dry shift or force it to shift. I would need somebody else hold, uh, spinning the propeller or I can just wait until I'm ready to test run the motor. And if I need to, I would unclip this, pull the washer and adjust the cable end here. But I like where this is at. There's a little bit of play there. That's gonna be a good position from what I've experienced. I like where that's at. Let's move on to the throttle. Same thing with the throttle. I'm gonna open that clip, drop the sheathing down in, clip it shut. And then I'm gonna put my cable end on this side as well. So you can see here too, we're too long. Here's the post, I'm way too far. So what I wanna do is go ahead and keep tightening until that's gonna line up. And if we look at the throttle arm here, this is all slack up here. When I get it to about here, there's a little, I can start to feel it wanna stop. And then I get to that spring loaded tension. I wanna get this throttle cable on in a position, it doesn't need to be all the way up here in the slack, but I wanna get it before there's any, I don't wanna be pulling on the throttle and seeing any of this linkage move. I don't wanna see that when the motor is in neutral at idle. I wanna make sure that at idle, there's no acceleration or pulling on the throttle. It's a fuel injected motor, it does not need to be choked, it does not need to be revved up to start. So in that position here, you'll see when I take the cable off, we're still in that slack position. I'm not moving the throttle body or advancing up here at all when I put my cable on. I like that. Tighten everything into position, slide that on. And if you're nervous about it, by all means, you can back it off a few spins and put it on there. Now we're really in that slack spot. Can't hurt, either way would be totally fine there. Put my clip in, my throttle cable and shift cables are in. My ignition harness, I'm gonna put that in its grommet hole. And then we're gonna slide through those cracks in the rigging grommet. We're gonna fit those to our shift throttle cables. It's gonna slide up onto the metal part of the shift throttle cable. And then we're going to work our grommet right into that side cowl of the motor. Make sure your battery cables are still in their slot. And that rigging grommet, it is a tight fit. So you want to look at the bottom side and the top. Make sure that you're all pressed into place. There's no rubber hanging out. Looks really good. We're ready to put the side cowl right back on. Put our gasket for the hood on. And tighten everything back in the things to remember when putting the side cowl back on you have your telltale for your water pump there's a little hole for that so make sure that lines up and then the other big one is this groove in here is for your rigging grommet on the front of the engine so we're gonna make sure those two things are lined up i like to start with the rigging grommet 
And how I like to approach this is when I get the ring and grommet lined up, this top bolt, I can just barely start to tighten. So what I'm gonna do is just thread that in. Not all the way snug, back it out a little bit. And then I can work to position that cowl so that all of our bolt holes are lined back up and we have a nice tight seal all the way around the motor. And I'm not gonna crank it tight with my impact. I'm just getting them seated in position because this is plastic. I don't wanna put too much torque. I definitely don't wanna break or strip or do anything to these bolts. So I'll go when I'm done and I'll hand tighten them with a screwdriver fitting to make sure that it's done properly. My telltale hole is lined up and sticking out. I'm good there. Rigging grommets in place. We'll go ahead and tighten these by hand. And then we'll do the same on the port side of the engine as well. And then we'll seat our gasket for the cowl or the top cowl hood, if you want to call it that. Back in position all the way around. Make sure our wires are nice and tidy in the front one more time, away from anything that might be moving. Make sure that our grommet is all seated in. No, no rubber sticking out in the front there. Everything looks good there for wiring, coming out the grommet in front. What's left to do now is get back up in the boat and install the control box. It's just laying in the bottom on that rail. And then as soon as that's installed, before we run it, we'll go ahead and put oil in because these don't typically come with oil. So we'll go ahead and check our dipstick first and then add oil to where it needs to be in order to run it. If you're installing this and you don't already have holes drilled, you would line your box up where you want it to go. I typically would use a clamp to hold it in place. And then I could start or at least mark with my drill bit where each hole is gonna go and drill through, whether it's through the railing Maybe you have a railing that's not filled in like this. Maybe you have a gap from the top to the next one. Really common. Typically we'll make a plate out of eighth, somewhere between eighth and quarter inch aluminum that's bolted to the rails. And then we can work our holes for our control box into that plate. That's really common. If you're going into your console, then you can simply line it up with the console where you want it. A lot of times I'll drill that first hole and get my top bolt in, then I can position the angle how I want it, and I can put my other two holes in. In this case, I had a mercury control box on here. That's the hole pattern for it. I'm gonna try to just reuse that same hole pattern uh, as much as possible, but of course, two totally different control boxes, they're not gonna line up. So I'm gonna use this front hole to start and make sure that it works with this shift lever and then I can plug in the back holes if need be. I'm not using the stock hardware, just because if you look at how long that is, I get it, you might be going through bigger surface. If this is going on a fishing boat or a bass boat, that typically, or even a speed boat, 20 horse on a speed boat, probably not. But you might be going into a side panel where the hardware, the extra hardware is gonna be completely concealed. Totally get that use the stock stuff. It's sharp, it's black, it's stainless. It is gonna fit right in there and work. However, look at how much longer that is than what I need. So what I need is this guy. What I have is something that's an inch and a half, two inches longer. So we're not gonna use those. We are going to use a stainless machine screw. It's not gonna interfere with the shift mechanism at all. If I had a flat head, I could use that. This is a pan head instead, but it fits right in there. It's gonna work well for what we're doing. So I've got my bolt through. I'm gonna run that through that front hole and I'm gonna do a big stainless flat washer, a lock washer, and then an acorn nut. I'll show you what that looks like from the outside, but I'm gonna just barely get this into position here, tighten the acorn nut on, and then I'm gonna have wonderful Miss Corey spin the propeller so that I can shift and make sure that my shift and throttle doesn't interfere with the console here. So in this position, you're spinning? Yeah. In full throttle position, I'm not interfering with the console. I can actually still get my hand on the throttle and I can still use the tilt button. So I like where that's at. Now I can 
tighten that front one down all the way and I'm gonna go ahead and just drill my other two holes and mount it right in right here. A lot of times when I'm installing these into railings, that thin sheet metal, I like to use a 732nd bit as opposed to a quarter inch. And that way I can get it seated, everything's in place. Then I'll tighten the nut on from the other side. So what it does in essence is this goes just under that quarter inch being 732nd instead of 832nd, which would be a quarter. And then that allows that thread of the stainless to thread into the aluminum because the stainless is a harder metal. I'll make sure that I've got room to turn the key. Looks good to me. And the safety lantern can fit on there too. If I didn't have that room, I could use those spacers. But again, if I'm not going to a plate or something hard and flat, I'm using this thinner sheet metal. I have it backed against the top of the railing. But if I put those spacers in, there's gonna be a lot of wiggle in the whole box. And I don't wanna put that wear and tear on the paneling itself. So right against the rail gives me a much better, longer lasting connection with the boat. We're gonna go on the outside, tighten these in with that washer and acorn nut. And this will be installed. We'll be ready to put oil in the motor and test run it. So we've got flat washer, lock washer, acorn nut, just gives it a nice finish. And if you ever are docking or I need to grab anywhere near these, you're not gonna get scratched by the end of a bolt. And this way I don't have to go in there and try to cut the end of the bolt off and end up damaging the railing. These other two holes, we could put some silicone in just to seal up. I don't know if you can even see those from there, but where the old control box was in, a little scratched up. If you remember the story of this boat, the motor was stolen off of it. And we are donating this boat to a veterans organization that gets them out on the water fishing. So this is really kind of, it's kind of cool to remember the story behind the boat and that those two holes there sort of sum things up and tell the story a little bit more, remind us where this bowl came from and where it's going. Hardware's in, holding the control box to the railing, nice and solid there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tidy up my wiring on the inside and back by the motor, I've got all that excess ignition harness, I'm gonna coil that up, get it in position so, uh, so it's out of the way. Then we'll put oil in and wrap it up. When I'm working back by the engine like this, I need to make sure that everything has enough slack in the system. That means battery cables, fuel line, uh, or shift throttle cables, ignition harness. I need to make sure all that has enough slack so that when the motor is turned all the way opposite from where everything is coming, that there's nothing pulling extra tension. So for my ignition harness, I'm gonna put a nice soft loop in even when it's all the way turned away from my ignition harness, I'm gonna make sure there's a nice soft loop so that when it comes back the other way, that loop stays. It can have excess. You're better off having a little slack at all times than any extra tension. My shift throttle cables are in a good spot there. They are not being bound or crimped or anything like that. Once I get those in position, I'm just gonna go ahead and run my zip ties so I'm tying up my ignition harness and we'll do the same thing with our battery cables since they all kind of go in the same same place i'm going to make sure that those are run along the steering cable it's a good place to anchor things too because the steering cable never moves so i'll anchor them here every six inches or so with zip ties that'll keep those in position and allow for that fluidity of the motor moving Good way to go about this is with the engine turned away completely and I've still got some slack. That's a great starting point. That's where I'm gonna put my first zip tie. So I know I've held that position. Your boat might be completely different for the battery cable. Uh, you might be running that up into the transom to a back seat or a battery box. You might be running it just like this to the side. There's a whole bunch of ways that that can go. In this case, I'm just taking it as neat and orderly to the battery as possible. Before I bundle everything up underneath, I'm gonna do the same thing I did here. 
up at the back of the control box where it goes through the floor. We'll take some zip ties up there and tie that up, and that'll leave me with a slack underneath the boat to coil up and tie up safely. Here we have our ignition harness and then our shift throttle cables going down from the back of the control box down through the floor. So same thing here, I'm just gonna tie them up nicely. I wanna make sure that that bend, if I'm positioning this hole, I already had one cut, but I wanna make sure that same idea. I don't wanna try to bend them straight down from the control box. I'd rather see them come back at least a foot like this to the hole or even farther if able. If you're doing a fishing boat, chances are they're gonna run straight back to the motor. They might tuck into a compartment or something, that's fine. But I don't want them to make a bend straight down like this if the hole were straight underneath here. That's gonna wear these out a lot faster and it's just gonna make for harder shifter, shifting and throttling the more you tighten or kink the sheathing into the cable that's inside. So we give them a nice soft bend, nice natural soft bend and then we'll zip tie them. I'm gonna try not to put a zip tie right at the top to pinch things or move them. I wanna give them some space because they'll move a little bit inside the control box and at the top. So I'll go down about a foot and I'll put my first zip tie there. And for this little guy here, we're not using that plug-in for the gauge plug. So I'm just gonna tie this up, kind of tuck it behind. We'll put one zip tie. I'm just gonna zip tie it to the ignition harness. But that way it's out of the way Kind of hidden there. I'm not going to try to tie it to a shift throttle cable because again I want those to move freely when it's this high up this close to the control box. That's tied up all nicely. I like to turn those zip ties away so nobody gets scratched. Put them towards the railing in this case or the side of the boat. That is all set. Get tie up underneath. We'll get some oil in this. Under the hood this motor is very straightforward. We have our oil fill here. And then we have our dipstick here. So just like your car, pull this out, wipe it. And what we're looking for, if you see those two holes, we're looking for the oil to be somewhere in the middle to full. Uh, we don't really want to overfill. I haven't wiped this, but we don't want to overfill. So ideally three quarter to full is plenty. That is it. Once you run it, then you'll want to make sure to check that oil one more time once it's run for a minute or two to make sure it hasn't dropped too far on the on the dipstick. But this engine doesn't take a whole lot of oil. It's uh, about a quart of oil, so keep that in mind. And your filter is over on this side for when you need to replace it. So pretty easy to access everything on this motor for an oil change. We have a video on 20 horsepower oil change and gear lube change as well. Thank you for watching. If this helped, made your project a little easier, please consider donating to our channel with super thanks in the description or www.buymeacoffee.com backslash Tom's Tunes.